Welcome back to the VIEW series. In this video, we'll take a look at async operations, lazy loading, and suspense. If we want to perform asynchronous operations in the setup option, we can mark it as async and use await inside it. As an example, let's say we want a component to fetch data from an external service. We mark the setup as async and use await on the fetch method. Next, let's add an instance of our async component to the root app component. When we're using async setup in a component, its parent has to invoke it inside a suspense tag. The suspense tag is a special component that renders fallback content until a condition is met. To use it, we wrap an instance of a component in open and close suspense tags. To demonstrate, let's add a pair of suspense tags and invoke the async component. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the content on the page. Asynchronous tasks may take some time to complete. We can use Suspense's default and fallback slots to show some sort of loading indicator while we wait for the async component setup to resolve. To demonstrate, let's set our async component as the default component we want to load. Then we'll add a simple paragraph with loading text as the fallback. It's possible that we won't see the fallback loading message in the browser because the component loads too quickly. We can simulate a slow load by simulating a slow connection in the browser. To do that, open the browser's DevTools and go to the Network tab. From the throttling dropdown, choose Fast or Slow 3G. If we reload the page, we'll see the loading message for a little bit. If the async operation fails and the component setup raises an error, we can capture the error in the onerror captured lifecycle hook imported from the view package. The hook takes a callback with the error as an argument and it can return false if we want to indicate to view that the error has been handled, or true if it should stop when it catches the error. An example would be something like logging the error to the console. We can optimize our application by loading components that perform async operations on demand. To do that, we use the define async component function from the core view package. It takes a callback that imports the component we want to lazy load as an argument. It's important to remember that the component is lazy loaded outside the config object and it replaces the regular component import statement. To demonstrate, let's lazy load our async component. If we run the example in the browser, it still shows the post contents as we expect. But now, our component lives in a separate chunk. To see the chunk, open the browser's dev tools, go to the network tab, and reload the page. You should see a file called one or one.js. We can tell Vue that we want the async component to display its own loading message instead of the fallback suspense content. The define async component function can take a config object as its argument. In the config object, we can have three options. Loader is the component that we want to lazy load. Loading component is a component that contains the loading message we want to use. Suspensible specifies if we want the fallback to be from the loading component or the suspense boundary in the template block. To demonstrate, we've created a loading component with a simple red loading message. In the root app component, we'll do a regular import for it and set it as the loading component. We'll also set suspensible to false to be sure loading message is used instead of the paragraph in the template. If we head over to the browser and throttle the connection again, we'll see the red loading text from the component. All right, that's it for lazy loading and suspense. In the next lesson, we'll learn how the router works with the composition API. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.